I I have been coming uh, every summer to uh, teach at Harvard, where I got my PhD and I also taught for many years before going back to India. But in India, I'm in politics, and uh, there is today happily a, a confluence that is coming about between the dharma that uh, religion teaches us and the political direction that the country ought to take. I have been uh, speaking the length and breadth of the United States this summer and uh, this is my I was in Pittsburgh yesterday addressing the same uh, the Indian community in which some Americans also come and uh, tomorrow I leave for India and I have uh, only one very simple message and that is that uh, the distinguishing feature about India is that it was a uh, 100% Hindu country for a long time and then many other religions came to India. After that, Hinduism has faced confrontation from other religions, particularly Islam and Christian, Christianity. And that confrontation was brutal it was the state power, power of the state was used against that. But contrary to whatever may be the history that is being taught here and there, the religion, the people of that religion, Hindu religion, fought back. And despite all the persecution for adhering to that religion, when India became free in 1947, it was still overwhelmingly Hindu. After that, after freedom, of, uh, after independence, there should have been a continuation of the Renaissance which Swami Vivekananda, Sri Aurobindo, and other sages had spoken about and guided, but uh, the state chose not to encourage that. And uh, ultimately, we reached a situation where today again Hinduism is confronted by a challenge. But that challenge is not like the past, of that of the past. In the past, the challenge was clear, obvious, marauding, invaders from abroad, or looting traders from abroad. But now it is much more pernicious, subterranean, and therefore it's become extraordinarily important that India be guided spiritually to understand this challenge and meet it. And that's why I came here today, because Swami Dayan Saraswati has shown this vision and is seeking to consolidate the spiritual forces to make people understand. India is today in the stage of what Sri Aurobindo had predicted in 1947. Situation of great churning. All our neighbors are failed states and could collapse any time. We within our own country have in 29 districts out of 29 states out of 35, subject to intense terrorism. India is also facing a major demographic conflict that arises out of illegal immigration and forced conversion. The fact of the matter is that the foundation of India the distinguishing feature of India is the Hindu foundation. And the moment the character of India deviates from that, it ceases to be India. 
and it is that particular foundation which is under attack. So we now find religious institutions coming under an attack from the state. Who guide, who's guiding it is a larger and bigger issue which I don't want to take up your time on. But the Kanchi Shankaracharya issue is an issue which should concern all of us because the Supreme Court has already held and the Madras High Court has subsequently held that the case lacks from a facie basis. And it's a matter of great tension and sorrow that not only enlightened Hindus are not awake to it, but leaders of religious denominations other than Hinduism, particularly Christianity or Christianity and Islam, have chosen to keep quiet. And we know what happened to Germany when people kept quiet. We know anywhere where people keep quiet. So the religious institutions today are being bombarded, devalued, defamed in a very insidious way. And we also find people coming from abroad who in their own country are discredited, are under investigation, are accused of fraud. And they come to India, discredit the religion that they say they represent and engage in monetary, money-based conversions. So this is a third, uh, a third threat that Hinduism is facing. And finally, there is a great deal of uh, devaluation, erosion of the authority of India in a variety of ways. And therefore, altogether, this multidimensional threat has to be met and it is in this regard that spiritual guidance is extraordinarily important. Swamiji is holding a, is already held, gatherings of all religious leaders. He has a very important one coming up in Bombay, or Mumbai is, is now called. And I think that you may indeed visualize if one were to look at it positively, that what Sri Aurobindo said in 1947, that there will come a time, and he thought it would be more than 50 years, when there will be a great churning in India, and out of that, a renaissance in Hinduism will rise, and India will again become a center of spiritual glory, in addition to the material prosperity that India had in the past. That India is headed towards material prosperity, there is no doubt now. Everybody is talking about the race between India and China and how the United States, India and China will be the triumvirate of the 2020s. And the latest uh, to join that bandwagon is the Business Week, which has a front page story which is running in 40 pages about how India and China are going, to, uh, are, are going to share power with the United States to create this kind of a world. But the more important thing would be India's traditional glory and that is the spiritual message that it gives. And I think that is essentially where the conflicts between politics and religion not in terms of theocracy, which India has never been, or at least the Hindu religion has never preached theocracy, but in terms of deriving values from religion in the conduct of political affairs. And this is the, this is the, this is the goal to which I am working, and essentially I came for inspiration, and I am honored that Swamiji thought it fit to ask me to say a few words. Thank you very much.